All right, guys, what's going on? Fly here. Welcome back to the channel. Hope you guys are having a nice, relaxful Sunday. Today's video, we're going to be talking and going over the new British ground vehicles in uh, War Thunder. Now, I can't say British tanks because they're not all tanks, which is pretty cool. Uh, but just to clarify, this is not the whole entire tree. Um, this is what it says on the dev vlog. We are introducing starter ground vehicles for the British tree. Now, it doesn't really make sense when they say starter because these are definitely not starter tanks. There's some very high-level ones and very devastating ones, but maybe they mean that these are the tanks that we're starting off with for the tree lines, if you will. Okay, so we're going to start like this. Um, we're we're going to start from left to right. I'll give you a document right here to uh, follow along with me. Uh, but the first one up is the T-17E2 armored car um, built on the base of an American armored car, the T-17. This is a vehicle with excellent mobility. It is capable of reaching over 55 miles an hour, which is 88 kilometers per hour, whilst driving on the road. This armored car may become the fastest armored vehicle in the game. The T-17E2 is armed with two coaxial Browning M250 cals or caliber heavy machine guns mounted on a rotating turret. This machine gun will be the first British SPAA in the first armored car introduced into War Thunder. Now, so this vehicle is, um, well, one milestone it passes, or one achievement it does. It's the fastest damn vehicle in the game, 88 uh, kph. <clears throat> but it being a car and it being low tier, it's probably going to take a little bit um, to get up to that top speed. Maybe not, I don't know. Um, but it's going to be, you know, slow turning and, or, you know, not maneuverable. You have to go forward to turn right, or, you know, like it's not a tank, so you can't, like, maneuver in tight corners. You got to have, you know, some inertia or speed. But what the T-17E2 also does for the game is that it opens that door for uh, armored cars in War Thunder, so we can expect much more variants from every nation. <clears throat> the Greyhound, please. Uh, but yeah, the T-17E2, uh, that's going to be a really fun tank to play. Should be low tier as well, probably 1.7 VR. All right, so the next vehicle in the first tank in this video, the Crusader AA Mark I. Oh my gosh, it's here. The 40 millimeter pom-pom, baby. Uh, this SPAA is truly dangerous. The legendary 40 millimeter Bofors anti-aircraft cannon installed on a Crusader tank turret served. Are you really tank turret? It's a chassis. Well, it's what it says. Uh, it looks like a chassis to me, but it says Crusader tank turret served with uh, great effect in Second World War. The cannon is capable of dealing with enemy aircrafts. Yeah, I bet it is as well as any fighter aircraft can, um, if not better. It's also worth trying to shoot at tanks. Yes, and that's where this tank's going to be awesome. The cannon won't let you down. On the other hand, try to keep this tank out of enemy sights. This AA gun's armor isn't its best feature. So what we can expect with this tank is a nice mobile chassis, um, a very good gun, very quick reload. This is an auto-loading gun, maybe probably with five or eight rounds. I really don't know how what the magazine um, of the 40 millimeter is, but it seems like five or six. These are huge rounds that come out of a little small tank. Um, so with anti-aircraft vehicles, you're going to have high explosive loaded, but a lot of anti-aircraft vehicles also have, you know, like APCR. All I know is that this tank's going to be really fun to play. Having the capability of shooting down airplanes and doing a lot of damage to enemy tanks is going to be worth the play. Next on the list is Armored Car Mark II AA, another anti-aircraft armored car in the British tree. Um, but unlike the predecessor, the T-17E2, uh, this was um, a complete or a pure British design designed by AEC. And fun fact, the AEC, or A, this, this is an you know, acronym, um, is the company that also produced the famous London Double Deck Bus. Kind of crazy in wartime how these companies that produce, you know, Peaceful products, you know, get turned around very quickly once war hits. Um, this SPA will join, or this SPAA will join the second rank of the tree. Uh, the Mark II AA armored car has twin 20 millimeters, um, and they're called Orlacan guns. Orlacan. Yeah, we'll use, use it as that. A single hit with this weapon is usually enough to destroy almost every aircraft at its rank. Cool. Moreover, these guns may prove dangerous against ground vehicles. Yeah, you don't say 20 millimeters rank two or tier two 
That's still scary stuff. These things will probably get an AP round. Oh my gosh, imagine that. What, what's that tier two? A Panzer IV? This thing, can get, this thing will maneuver around it, get right to the side, and just destroy everything. I can't wait to use this thing. Hell yes. The Crusader AA Mark II. Now, unlike the Mark I, the Crusader AA Mark I, uh, this one has been fitted with an enclosed turret. Also, they have gotten rid of the 40 millimeter. I wouldn't have mind if you kept it, uh, but we do have two 20 millimeters. These are the Orlikin guns. Con, I do apologize if I mispronounce so. those. That's funny. This tank has moderate armor and is fairly survivable. Um, they summarize that in terms of effectiveness in battle uh, with the enemy, this anti-aircraft gun can be compared with the German equivalent, the, the Webelven. But overall, this tank looks nice to use. Um, they're saying uh, the most important thing is that this vehicle will be simply indispensable even if you already have other British Rank 3 ground vehicles in your team. So it seems like this will be a 20 millimeter Rank 3 vehicle, which is fine and dandy, but the, the, the Crusader AA Mark I has a 40 fucking millimeter at, I don't know, like a low ass rank. And this one seems just because it has more armor, it's going to be up tiered higher. But we, we don't know the, what we don't know the ammo that we're going to use with these um, Orlikin uh, 20 millimeters. Now we're under a new category of tanks and vehicles. This is light and cruiser tanks. We're on to the A17 Mark One uh, Tetrarch. The little Tetrarch A17 became one of the most interesting British tanks of World War II. Nicely armed for its class and being very maneuverable, this was one designed to be transported by air and airdropped using the Ham Ilkar glider. What? That's awesome. Several new features were implemented in this vehicle's design, mostly affecting the chassis. That's awesome to learn that uh, it was dropped in by a freaking glider. Oh my gosh. They say game gameplay-wise, the Tetrarch will be similar to the American M22 Locust. Uh, mobility, firepower, and bulletproof armor. That's bulletproof, not shell-proof. Or you know what I'm saying, like a bigger round. Uh, this shell will be good at outflanking enemy forces on urban maps. We are sure that this tank will have many fans in the game. So War Thunder, can I please, can we please drop this tank from a glider and we can pilot the glider and land the glider and then take the tank out? War Thunder, don't make your guns be nuns, okay? Now we're on to the Crusader Mark III. Now I just wanna clarify guys that I'm not gonna be covering every single tank in this tree. Uh, for example, the A-13, we already had that tank in game, the Sherman Firefly, blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to be covering the Crusader Mark II because I'm, going, I'm covering right now the Crusader Mark III. And when I cover the Crusader Mark III, we'll kind of understand the Crusader Mark II. All right, cool. Anyways, the Crusader Mark III or the Crusader III was upgunned to a six-pounder, the first British tank to mount this gun. Um... The turret also received an extractor fan to clear fumes from firing the gun. The larger gun restricted turret space to the crew was reduced to three. Interesting. Uh, with the commander acting as, oh my gosh, the commander was acting also as the gun reloader. The loader was already the wireless operator. The auxiliary turret space was given over to ammunition storage. Oh gosh, the Crusader III first saw action with about a hundred participating at the Second Battle of El um, Alamein in October 1942. Correct me if I'm wrong, but when I first started to get into like history of tanks and whatnot, I remember hearing that the Crusader was one of the worst tanks for liability. Its engine would break down and it um, was very prone to brew up when hit. Um, this is a like slang term. A problem that was identified as due to the ammunition being ignited by hot metal penetrating unprotected uh, racks. The angle underside the turret created shot traps that acted as a lever for lifting the turret from its mounting when struck by a shell. So the question is how reliable this tank is gonna be, where the crap is the ammo gonna be stored, and also how tightly packed is the crew gonna be in the fighting compartment of the tank? If they're too close, it's, this tank's gonna be one-shot it very easy, even if ammo doesn't even explode. 
And now on to one of the most anticipated tanks to be added to the game, um, the Cromwell 1 in 5, the A27 variants. Um, they, it's funny, they say this tank is well known from wartime posters in post-war cinema. We believe many War Thunder players will recognize it, or there was just a video game before War, War Thunder tanks that we all played it in. Um, the A27M Cromwell became one of the most successful cruiser tanks of World War II. It received a new, new Rolls-Royce Meteor engine with 600 horsepower. It was more than enough to significantly improve this tank's performance. So the Mark 1, I, I believe, we have is one with the 57 millimeter, and then the A27 Mark 5 is the 75 millimeter cannon. This tank is just going to be so fun to play, so maneuverable, so fast. The suspension is the Cromwell uses an improved Christie type suspension, so it's just going to be phenomenal to use this tank in urban combat and even having the speed and mobility to get to sought after sniper locations and hold down positions on open maps. The last light slash cruiser tank to be added to War Thunder right now is the A34 Comet 1. Um, it was a further development of the Cromwell tank. This excellent tank that the British High Command considered the best in his class weighed 33 tons, while its firepower was greater than any other allied tank of the time. The only similar tank in the British Armed Forces was the Sherman Firefly, However, it was far inferior to the Comet in everything apart from the armor penetration of its main armament. The Comet was armed with a modernized 17-pounder anti-tank cannon that was already shown its effectiveness, effectiveness as a field artillery piece. Does moder modernized mean that this tank's going to have Sabo? I mean, hey, the Black Prince does. The turret armor also saw significant improvements. The Comet inherited its chassis from the Cromwell, which is the Christie type, or the improved ver uh, variant. War Thunder says that the tank accounts for itself rather well. Pretty much they mean that it performs well, okay? Against third and even fourth ranked opponents, even though it can have low survivability due to the poorly chosen angle of sloping its armor. The right combination of mob mobility with its weapon make the Comet a dangerous tank in a fearsome SPG Hunter. Yeah, I bet it is, dude. This tank is gonna be freaking awesome. Can't wait to play it. So now we're on to the medium tanks. We have the Centurion Mark III, or the Centurion, and the Mark X. We also have the Sherman VC Firefly, but we already play that tank now, so I'm not really gonna go over that. On the dev blog, they say the third modification of the Centurion uh, received a quick firing 20 pounder gun. So this is a, this is the first Centurion that we're going to get, the Mark III. Uh, this cannon is uni un unique. Jeez Louise. This cannon is unique in that it is extremely powerful, based on the 88 KWK 43, the German the German gun. The tank did not take part in the Second World War, but proved to be very efficient in post world conflicts. Example: the Korean War and even Vietnam. In War Thunder, it will join the British tree as the fourth rank and will be a decent rival for late Panthers in T-44s. Yes, I believe this tank is going to fucking destroy Panthers, War Thunder, and T-44s. Now, I couldn't really find much about the Centurion Mark X. Um, on Wikipedia, they say that's an up-gun and up-armored Mark VIII. It doesn't really make much sense to me because the Mark III already had the 20-pounder and the Centurion Mark X has a 20-pounder. It could be up armored, but they say AKA FV4017, which is that World of Tanks tier 10 uh, medium. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Next video, we are going to be continuing with the British ground vehicles with the heavy and infantry tanks, and then finish it off with tank destroyer and SBGs. And that video should be out tomorrow, which is Monday. But again, guys, thanks for the support. Have a great Sunday. Peace out.